Juan Suxia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, sir. I have been waiting for, a, uh, for an opportunity for a long time to participate in the, in the discussions on the issues that are far-reaching implication on the capabilities of children seeking education both at primary and secondary level. In this backdrop, I welcome the initiative of the government in moving this amendment bill for the consideration of this August House. We have made much headway with implementation of a flagship education program, Sarva Seksha Abhiyan. From the survey conducted both by the governmental agencies and the NGOs on attaining declared target set under Sarva Seksha Abhiyan program, I find there is still a lot to be done both on the development of infrastructure and improving the content and quality of teaching. The latest edition of the report regularly brought out by Pratham NGO annual survey of education report present a mix of findings on key elements like reading ability, enrollment rates, dropout rates, and other incentives like midday meal scheme, etc. The amendment attempts to deploy an ad hoc measures arising from the acute shortage of trained teachers by relaxing the minimum stipulated qualifications for a limited period of five years by which time it expects the teacher's training infrastructure will be in place to address the manpower requirement projected under this bill. From what is reported in the media, the state of teacher education in India is very dismal. With the regulatory body, National Council for Teacher Education, abdicating its mandated responsibilities. It is interesting to note that the council has served a show post notice to more than 3,800 teachers training institute across India as to why their affiliation should not be withdrawn for violation of norms relating to the infrastructure, faculty, and willingness to engage a third party for independent assessment of the quality of the training imparted. The alarming state of teachers' education in the country is reflected the fact that in recent years, the majority of the graduates that have appeared for the central teacher's eligibility test have failed to demonstrate even the most basic knowledge based expecting from the teacher. This is not to mention the vision, skill, and values necessary for the kind of classroom evasions by progressive policy document, but which for the most part are not adequately addressed by teachers' training programs. Although a range of committees and policy documents in recent decades have decried the worrying state of teachers' education and have made many recommendations for its urgent reforms, the majority of these proposals have yet to be implemented. While demanded for more teachers has in recent years led to an explosion in the number of teachers' education institutions and courses of various levels, this has not been coupled with a push on infrastructure, faculty expertise, learning resource, or quality. A greater challenge is that more than 85% of these teacher education institutes are in the private sectors where the state has exerted little quality control. No doubt my colleagues and seniors in this August House have already shared their erudite views on this issue and it's for the House to strike a balance between the realities prevailing in the education system today, in particular reference to teacher education and a capacity to build up a teacher training infrastructure as planned under the right of children to free and compulsory education amendment bill 2017 and go by the wisdom and judgment availability in hindsight. I hereby recommended the bill for adoption by the House. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Wanson.